this is a great little treat for us getting ready for the college football season. We'll do some NFL stuff as well. Daniel Jeremiah, NFL Network, at Move the Sticks. That is also the podcast of Bucky Brooks. So uh, there's some things that I want to get to here because I know there's just – we don't have the new tape yet, right? I know you've yeah. broken down some of the college guys. But before I do that, I just spent a long time in the open talking about how often – the first round rookie quarterbacks start. I mean, they they start a lot of these games unless you have outlying circumstances like Holmes with Alex Smith. I think everybody knew when Jordan Love came in. Trey Lance as well was more of a developmental guy because he hadn't played a lot in college either. I am forever without an answer. I, I don't know that I'll ever come to a conclusion of the line of, hey, he's not ready. Let's let him watch versus mm-hmm. the only way you get better at something is by actually doing it. And I, I know that, look, I did this quarterback series years ago here at the Ringer where I wanted to talk to all of these quarterbacks that it didn't work out for and like what happened. And some are just like, I'm not good enough. Others were like bad system, bad coordinator, all of these different things. It really is quarterback specific. But again, as I continue to explain this to you, you know, I don't think Mahomes is great because he sat for a year, okay? I think yeah. he would have figured it out. I think other guys get thrown into the fire immediately. They probably weren't going to work out anywhere. Is there anything that you've discovered in your years with this where you feel like this is the way you would want to lean trying to get this guy ready? Yeah, I, I, I've done a lot of the same homework on that over the years, and uh, there's two layers to it. One is you start with – uh like the the mental toughness of the quarterback to survive the failure. Like you have to start there. You're like, okay, if we don't have the guys, the pieces in place, like how mentally tough is this kid? You know, and that's somewhat nebulous. You're not going to have, you know, a hundred percent answer on that. But some guys, you know, like, okay, hey, this guy hasn't played a ton. Um, it's a little more fragile. We got to protect this a little bit more and be a little bit more thoughtful and, and careful with how we go about it. So that was the first part of it. The other thing is, and I've kind of just made this simple, which was, if you look at young quarterbacks to put them in the in a position to be successful, I just looked at the P's. It was like, okay, do I have a play caller? Do I have protection? Do I have playmakers? If you're in, if you're zero for three on those, it's probably best that let's slow the train down here. You know what I mean? So that's like the little simple, easy checklist on that one. Start with are they you know the the mental toughness to be able to handle some adversity, which is going to come no matter what. And then to me, my confidence level of whether to throw them out there is going to be dependent on how many of those three P's that they hit. Toughness is an interesting one because, I mean, do you really know someone's toughness? I think you don't. I think, I, I think, but I think like Josh Allen would be my example. Like, I think if you spent time with Josh going through that process, he was pretty hardened and tough considering what he played with at Wyoming and who he was playing against and having some failure and then seeming like he came through it okay. Um, I felt like, okay, he's someone that he'll be able to take his lumps. First of all, physically he's tough. Like he can play behind a crappy offensive line. You can run him. He's, you know, he's so sturdy and durable that he'll be able to physically survive. But then I think just spending a bunch of time with him, you're like, okay, mentally he's, he'll be fine too. He's a very, very confident kid who's had to play with lesser. Some of these guys, the biggest challenge is they've just always played with superior dudes. And now all of a sudden you drop them in there. Um, and now they're, they're, they're freaking uh, on the short end of the stick talent wise every single week with who they're playing against. That's a major adjustment. But guys, you know, when you're when you saw what he was playing with the Wyoming his last year, uh, there was no adjustment. Yeah, the Wyoming thing, like looking back, I wish I had been more all in on it because there were those games where you just thought he has no chance. He has no yeah. chance. And he's still keeping some of these plays alive. But you know, whatever. I I defaulted to the accuracy thing, and I'd say even the first couple of years he was in, I went. I'm like, I was listening to Chris Long on his podcast, and after he threw all those picks against New England, I remember watching that game, going, "I don't know, man. I don't yeah. know." And then that was actually Allen admits in that interview a turning point where he just realized, like, okay, even though I'm physically capable of doing some of these things, I have to stop doing them. And look, yeah. some detractors would say there's still a little bit too much. I'll take it all. I'll take all yeah. of that. I, I want guys willing to dial up the risk a little bit. The reason I was also thinking about this, because I just taped with Brock Purdy. We're going to run that next week. And I was wondering about Purdy. And granted, look, he's at Iowa State. He's 6'1", 200 mm-hmm. plus pounds. That's why he goes last in the draft. So it's a physical thing first. He's not highly recruited coming out of high school in a Arizona. But when you spend a little time with him, I wonder if he actually didn't do well in his interviews because he wasn't selling you 
on this mental toughness. And the reality yeah. was, is that that's just the efficiency of him. Like his toughness is not worrying about all of this nonsense. Like I could see like a big guy like Mitch Trubisky sitting down with a bunch of front office people making the decision. And you're like, oh, look at this hoss, you know, look at this big, <laughs> tough guy. And, and maybe a little further down the road, you go, maybe he just wasn't really, there wasn't that much there. Or he wasn't really processing all that much stuff. And yeah. that actually is the bigger issue, even though in the 15 minutes, 30 minutes, he sold us on like being this tough guy. I could see Purdy interviews people leaving that just from his like his demeanor going i don't know is that guy really going to be starting for us 17 games a year and mm -hmm. the reality is is that his demeanor might be better wired even if he doesn't check the cliche toughness boxes yeah he he's one that i've gone back and done some homework on um just trying to figure out okay what did i miss i went back through all my notes and then i didn't have any there was no like we would say a blue trait like there's no like elite level trait that he possessed. So it's just, man, in the history, if you go back and look at guys that don't have elite either, you know, size, arm strength, athleticism, um, you know, I, I didn't even, even like accuracy, I thought it was good, but I didn't think he was on, you know, on an elite, elite level. So I'm like, well, how the heck do I figure out how I screwed this up? So I talked to Matt Campbell and I was like, you got to help me fill in the gaps here, man. Like what, what did I miss? What did we all miss on this guy? Man, he kept, you know, it's kind of a cliche uh, answer, but I thought it did make some sense. And I think if you would have had an opportunity to be around him more, like be around him at practice, he said he had like he said, I would use the term and I wouldn't use it lightly. It's a cliche, but like competitive greatness. When you when you watched him in practice every day, every single day, every drill, he said he is just like an insane competitor. Um, and you wouldn't know that, like you said, from talking, visiting with him for 10, 15 minutes, even an hour, because he's, he doesn't have a big presence about him. He's a little bit soft spoken. Um, but he said he was a maniac as a competitor. Um, so, I mean, that's, again, I'm like, well, I don't know how I'm going to figure that out for the next Brock Purdy that comes along, but it is something to dive into just in terms of talking to teammates. Like, what's he like in practice? Like, and if you usually, you, they don't have to, uh, you don't worry about them. Okay, well, maybe they just wouldn't tell me. Like the guys that are the psycho competitors, there's going to be stories that are going to emerge if you talk to a bunch of their teammates. Yeah, it's funny you said that because we take this part out because you use it in the recruiting stuff that we'll do like a couple times a year. But I asked him yeah. for his best recruiting story. So I'll just share it here with the audience as well as he went to Bama as a preferred walk on to visit with Saban. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he told us that Saban was like, you know, here's what you do. Uh, he's like, you're not all that accurate. <laughs> 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 and yeah. as brock was telling the story i'm thinking like okay you know like did you you know did you even want to go to alabama and he's like i just couldn't believe he was saying this stuff about me. <laughs> kind of like little like he answered it in a direction where it had way more to do with he hasn't gotten over the slight um yeah. which kind of speaks to what you're talking about but the thing that you're talking about is also the impossibility of you can have great connections with college coaches yeah. and all that stuff you've got to worry about the coaches lying to you uh, if the coach dogs one of their prospects to an NFL team and then that makes the rounds and that's going to be used against the staff. So you yeah. really, really have to be like lifelong friends with these people to get the truth out of them. And even with that, if you don't have that kind of access and you're making a decision on the future of your franchise for five years, it's just really, really hard to think, you know, the person. Um, what, one of the things that I've, I've learned, um, and it's still hard to do because it's hard, like sometimes to get access to this stuff, but um teammates have been way more accurate with information on players and sometimes it can be what they don't say versus what they do say uh, about guys but there's they out they don't have the professional guard up and they don't have skin in the game for anything to get back to them like the coaches do like you just mentioned how that can screw a program so if you talk to enough of them and then the other side of it is it's not it's not you know describe him or you know one to ten like those that's stupid I want stories like don't, don't tell me like he's the toughest guy on the team. Well, how, give, give me an example. Like, give me a couple stories of how tough this kid is. And I was like, oh, well, you know, he freaking popped his, his shoulder out and then didn't come out of the drive. And then blah, 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 blah. Like you get you get those type of stories. And that's something that like I go back to Ozzie Newsome and my time around him. He was awesome at that. Because we'd be, we'd have an issue with a player and trying to figure out, you know, and then all of a sudden he'd ask that one, hey, give me this, give me an example of him, you know, in, maybe in the weight room, you know, tell us about what he does in the weight room. And then you'd get specific stories and it would either confirm or, or, or be in conflict with what the opinion we had in the room. Yeah, that reminds me of like two different stories, because I remember when um, 
when Burrow was at LSU and the first game they played was against Miami. And remember, mm-hmm. Burrow's first year at LSU was all right. I mean, yeah, LSU yeah, was yeah. thrilled. Yeah, because it was like, yeah. oh, there's at least a stabling force at the position here. Mm-hmm. And I guess in the pregame, there was this altercation with some of the guys from Miami, and Burrow just ran into the crowd and like slammed his hand <laughs> in one of the dudes and said, take this L. And like the defensive guys on LSU <laughs> were going, who the fuck is this guy? Like, what? And, you know, it's it's also tough, too, because then it's like, all right, well, now we want to try to model our our selections and influence with that. It's like, okay, yeah, who's a lunatic on your team? You're like, okay, yeah. but I wouldn't want him in my locker room or anything. Um, it's just it's just forever hard. All right, let's 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 start talking about uh, this class. I was looking at the mocks for 2025 because I just mm-hmm. like doing it as you get ready for the college football season with everything. Um, is Beck at this point, and I know that you've really, I don't want to put you on the spot yeah. here. I, I yeah. know that most of your summer deep dive is kind of the top quarterbacks, still very incomplete. So let's just get that out there. Um, but as far as the work that you have done on him, uh, where is he now going into the season? Yeah, he'd be the top guy for me. Number I mean, one overall. Yeah. I mean, just of the guys I've done all those court, you know, those top tier quarterbacks and look at those guys. So, um, he's going to have pole position for me coming into the process everything and we talk about okay what are kind of the blue traits he's got the size he's got plenty of arm strength he's he's really good uh, foundationally like he plays with his feet in the ground he's on balance obviously didn't have to do as much um with what he has there so that's where some of the gaps got to get filled in um but you know he's the prototype he's a prototypical quarterback and i don't know enough about him yet on the personal side of things in terms of you know leadership you know intelligence all that stuff but just from a pure tape study watching those guys when you look down at your paper and you're like okay i always you know you're kind of writing this little summary this little summer uh summary which is pretty basic and generic and i'm like all right where's the bad stuff and i'm like oh well it's not a lot i don't have a lot of bad stuff in here from the games that i watch so um, I, I, I'm hoping and the schedule being what it is, I think you'll have an opportunity this year to kind of maybe carry a little bit more of that load, um, in some of those big matchups with the, with the realignment. But, uh, yeah, everything I saw was really, really solid. What did you see where I felt like there was, there was a couple games in the middle of the season where I felt like whatever it was, the, it wasn't a stat thing. It was the light went on for him. Um, did, did you see that? But it just it felt like a guy that was more comfortable, more decisive, even if the stats wouldn't necessarily back up that he had two different seasons within the same season. Yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of going through my notes. Um, I thought he was more I thought he was more decisive and and even as a runner um, going back through that, just seeing opportunities and taking them, not playing quite as as cautious or as hesitant. Um, Those are some of the things that, you know, when I'm going through and looking at this stuff. Um, I thought he worked in the middle of the field. One of the things you'll see with guys that don't have a ton of experience is you'll see they'll live on the edges. Uh, it gets real muddy and real blurry in the middle of the field. And that's literally, you know, that's the NFL game is played in the middle of the field in those crowds. You got to be comfortable. You got to throw with anticipation. Um, I thought, you know, as the more he played, the more it wasn't just them, you know, protecting him and bubbles and perimeter stuff. They were letting him function and drive seam balls and he can, you know, he can do that. Um, but I, I think you're, you're probably on to something there just with the confidence level, the experience. I think you saw them better as it went along. All right. Who's number two then for that position? For me, it was yours. And this, like, I, I had no idea the blowback and the, like the amount of people that hate yours. I maybe hates too strong, but they're not fans of yours. And surprisingly, a lot of them have longhorn logos in their, uh, in their profiles. And I'm sure this, that's a lot of that has to do with Arch, you know, and then, you know, that is the, the shiny new toy that they're anxious to unpack and play with. And uh, I understand that. But when I watched him, I'm like, man, this guy's young. Um, he's got a live arm. He's got a lot of twitch in his body. And the comparison I used, which then people freak out about, of course, but I'm like, he, he reminds me of Baker. And then I never, I never thought this through that like you have, okay. You already have the dynamic of yours, and he's transferred, and then he's got the, the star back at quarterback. So there's a lot of opinions there. And then now you've just taken the Texas quarterback and compared him to the Oklahoma, you know, all, all, you know, heavenly right. saint that is Bayfield. So literally after posting that, Ryan, my mentions, I, I just backed away. And it was just, it was, a, it was an Oklahoma, Texas, you know, battle royale in, in my mentions of how I insulted him. And they're using statistics and I'm like, I'm, I'm not, I don't care about the statistics. I'm talking about guys who are kind of compact, who have a lot of life in their body, who play with energy. Um, I think about Baker, 
you know, coming into that last year, he was not, nobody was talking about him as a top 10 pick at, at that point in time. But he had gone into Ohio State and won in hostile territory and had that big win. You've got Ewers, who's gone and beat Alabama. Um, it played well against Bama the year before, before he got hurt. Um, so I, I think he's got a lot of ability in there. I think he's young, and I think he's getting better. Um, he's not perfect by any stretch, but I'm like, there's a lot. I think there's a lot to work with with that kid. Okay, and you have Shador next up? Yeah, Shador would be next. Just, just I mean, look, it's hard because they're so bad up front. Um, but I thought that he just has got to, he's got to, he's got to play with a faster clock. Um, you know, at some point in time, you have to adjust to your surroundings. They'd be like, I can't just, I can't sink my feet into the ground and get, and just get completely stuck here. Um, so that's stuff that I thought he needed to work on, but make every throw, um, throws a beautiful ball. Like, I mean, and mechanically, um, it's, it's pretty like he's got a, a beautiful motion, um, ball comes out nice. He can layer the ball. He's got touch. Um, he just has to simply play faster. I think again, look, the guy was at Jackson state. It's a different, it's a different sport um, than what he uh, what he found at Colorado. So I'm, I'm anxious to see if he's made some improvements in that area. But he can spin it. I felt bad for him last year, and mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's entirely blameless because you're right. As the season continued to get worse and worse, you're like, dude, you got to get the ball out. But at the yeah. same time, it's like, okay, you know, your O line can't protect. Um, you know, they have they had guys that could clearly get separation. So I don't feel like it was like a Drew Aller situation at Penn State, but. Um, you know, whether it was the issues with the coaching and I'm not a big play calling guy in the, on the Monday mm-hmm. after the games, but it's like, all right, how many times are you just going to drop back yeah. and, and have these long developing routes, deep overs, <laughs> right? It's just like, <laughs> Hey, guess what? It's, he's not going to have time my guard, again. My so, guard has no <laughs> chance against this guy. No chance. So you're watching it going, what, what are you guys doing to him? But yeah. then at the same time, it's like, all right, well. You know, where maybe if the, I, I mean, imagine I can't imagine anyone's running a, a power four now, not power five conference offense where they're not giving you some kind of release valve yeah. with some of the stuff. But there but, was, I thought, before they made the coordinator change, I thought early in the year was the early, best that he played. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right, which again adds to another layer of the whole Colorado conversation of that all of the, it just looked that much worse. Like I, yeah. I thought he was actually decisive in the beginning because they were like mm-hmm. setting him up with some of the stuff. So, you know, I don't know that he can play like that again and be considered. Let me say it this way. If he has another season like this, where he's just getting his ass handed to him all the time yeah. and we don't see a development either, you know, look, the protection has to be better. There's a lot of stuff around him that has to be better. I worry that he could be one of those like preseason top 10 mock draft picks. And if it's the same thing again in 24, then I, d- I don't know that he's going to be projected to go as high. Is that fair? Yeah. I, I, I will say this. There's been times in the past, and I think it's better now, especially because there's so many people in the space that are, that are doing this. So there's kind of like some checks and balances with evaluating these guys really, really early. And I think there's also... There's a lot more ways to get connected with NFL sources to get information. But I remember I was scouting uh, like when Matt Barkley was coming out and it was my all time guy preseason top 10 pick. But but again, another year was he was uh, and I and I I've told Todd this a million times, too. Like, I can't imagine having to do a mock draft like the day after the the previous draft. Like, that's insane Um, to put that (laughs) on. Anybody is impossible. He hates Um, it. Trust me. uh, Exactly. And, you know, and we've talked about this, but like. Matt Barkley, when everybody did their spring scouting, was never a first round pick. Like no, nobody. Once everybody got a chance to watch him and really study him, and I'm sure even mock drafts that got put out once people got to really study him, he was never that. Because I just remember people talking about, oh, guy, they use it as an example of guys should come out and and this, that, and the other. I'm like, no, 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 nobody had done their homework on Matt. Matt and Matt's, and in, in his credit, he's maximized his ability. He's had a long NFL career as a backup. Um, with kudos to him, but he was never. When anybody did their full evaluation coming off of the year before, he was never a top 10 pick. He was never going to be the first overall pick. Um, and so I think sometimes that gets skewed. With Shadur, um, talking to people around the league, I mean, most people thought he thought he was like a second round pick over the summer. They thought that's kind of where he you know enters into this, this year and this process. So I think that's a little bit watered down from maybe some of the expectations of some of the mock drafts. But um, I think he's, you know, I, I think if he if he improves some things and really more than anything else, just speed up his clock, I think he could be a first round pick. 
but I don't think he comes into this thing as like, man, hopefully he doesn't fall on his face. He's a top five pick and he could fall out of the first round. I, I don't think that's the opinion. Okay. Uh, I like that. I mean, I, I don't think it's as bad as like a Hackenberg thing because I think Hackenberg physically checked all these boxes. Yeah. And then as the season played out, you're just like, this isn't, this isn't, I was like waiting. There was more like it was like patience with Hack. Yeah. Like, hey, this yeah. has to happen eventually. Uh, and then it never did. Okay, but so, maybe one of the maybe one of like the, the silhouette of a quarterback. Like if Jerry West was like the logo for for the NBA, like Hackenberg is like a quarterback prospect silhouette. Fantastic. Okay, uh, I'm going to throw like another Buzz Lightyear with that jaw. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal jaw. Phenomenal jaw. Phenomenal. Uh, but he he was also somebody. I forget if it, yeah, well, I don't, I don't forget. I actually know exactly what it was. I just don't know if I feel bad. No, I, cause Josh McCown didn't do anything wrong. I love Josh McCown, huge yeah. fan. And he was Hackenberg's teammate. And Josh came up to ESPN to do like a little car wash. And I was like, what's up with Hackenberg? He's like, man, make all the throws physically off the charts. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of went through the list and that he left. And I think I turned, forget if it was Van Pelt or Canal at that point. And I was like, I think he's telling us he can't play. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. You know, what's so funny about that is I had a training camp tour with uh, McCown. I won't, I won't say the team cause it'll, it'll, uh, it'll rat him out, but he's such a good dude. And I got to know him just from just seeing him at training camp tours. And he's just such a great dude. So they had a new, he's coordinator. the best. And just they for the record too, like he was talking him up to me. They yes. didn't say anything in the commercial break, you know, pounded it out shook hands left and then i was like i think that's him saying nope yeah he yeah. was very he i did an interview with him uh and then we sat and talked for 15 20 minutes and it wasn't he wasn't like there's guys that are like talking crap and trying to make excuses about surroundings and everything and they had a, a new coordinator at this location and i so we finished up and i go so how's it going with the new coordinator he goes oh we have no chance <laughs> 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 it was totally off the record it was so harmless and it, it, it proved out it was uh he was very accurate wow yeah my other one and saruti write this down in the repeated rosillo stories list because this will be the last time i use it was larry fedora with trubisky fedora came in did the car wash mm -hmm. it was like what's up with trubisky just been drafted second he went through the list everything he's like you know if he's got this, 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 this just start. It's like, you know, if the weather, you know, yeah, I'm oh, kidding. No. But it was just a, a yeah. list of things that, you know, you do this, you, you're patient. Yeah. You get, you, you play to his strengths, you know, the whole thing. And we're like, all right, thanks. And then when he left, I was like, uh oh. Yeah. Was, what about Brian Kelly with Deshaun Kaiser? Remember that? Uh, well, he said he should have come back to school. Remember, like, I don't remember I'm that specifically. You, Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, it was a big story. It, it's so it, as well with uh, with Pete said that Mark Mark Sanchez. Should I remember that back. one. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious if we were to go back, has a coach ever been wrong on that? Like, because the coaches get destroyed when that when that gets out or when they in that case, I think both those guys said it on the record. Brian Kelly absolutely said it on the record. Um, but I don't know of any time where I've been like, well, coach was way wrong on that one. I remember Carol specifically talking about the number of starts like that used to be yeah. one of the things that we could the all study look at. yeah it was like yeah. the parcells rules yeah yeah right if you have less than this number of starts mm -hmm. the history is actually overwhelmingly bad and i think carol pointed that out he was he even sitting next to sanchez i, I think th it was on when he was announcing yeah. he was coming out i think they were had a little <laughs> press conference sitting next to each other on the desk if i remember that correctly yeah and I, mark I is such a was. nice dude I, I, like right. mark's never i don't ever recall him ever even really saying anything about it and I, again obviously his career got off to a great start and he played for a long time and i wouldn't view mark sanchez as a you know as a bust he he went to uh, some championship games so i mean it just uh it was I, I don't think that he's, you know, you know, didn't obviously go on to be a, a perennial pro board and a hall of famer. I'm just curious if we were to do that study of a coach who's had something that's maybe at least less than flattering, if it's ever been thrown back in that coach's face. I'm sure we could find it. It's just, it's tough to remember all this stuff. Okay. Uh, the other name that I hear in this mix outside of top three, because I think so far your three are, are fairly, you know, consensus. Uh, well, you know, mm -hmm. I, I guess I, I, Say I've seen Sanders ahead of yours more than 
than the yeah, way oh, yeah, we just yeah. laid That's it out. That's the most so, pushback I right. got. Does Connor work? Connor Wegman, a and Yeah, I haven't done enough on him. I, I just he just know, hasn't played so, enough too. Yeah, the, the one thing I know about that I can tell you about that situation is when I talked to guys on that staff last year after he got hurt, it was curtains and they knew it. I mean, that's how much, you know, they knew he meant to what they were trying to get accomplished there. Okay. Is there any other name then we should throw into the first round mix? Um, that's, I mean, that's it for me. I mean, the, I've peaked at Aller. Um, I haven't done enough work on him to say, you know, one way or the other, but I did not, I did not come away from that thing. He was going to be a first round pick. The guy that is, the, well, there's nothing, there's nothing from the yeah. two big games that would go, yeah, this is going to be great. And I mean, yeah. I've already referenced the lack of talent on the outside, but I mean, I think it got to a point with him where he was just like his confidence was falling apart too on top of everything else. So go ahead. Well, you know, I'm excited about this South Dakota State kid. Um, again, I haven't done any work on him yet, Ryan. Um, you have a name? Can you? Yep. There you go. Thank you. Uh, again, I'll get all these to memory before too long, but it, that's one that's come up a bunch talking to guys that have done their summer work. Uh, and, and scouts said, you're going to have fun watching this kid. He's a fun watch. He's athletic. Um, and I, I think they have Oklahoma state right out the shoot. So, um, that'll be one. Like if you, you ask me ironically, like what's the game you're looking forward to watching, uh, once the, uh, the game tape rolls in off of this opening weekend, that that's going to be one of the first ones I watch just because I'm intrigued to see that kid. Let's talk Travis Hunter because he really is that dynamic. Um, mm-hmm. Is the value in him being a corner or a wide receiver for a draft pick? I think I'm on a limb on this one, but I, I watched a bunch of him over the summer and I liked him better at wideout. Um, I just thought he's, he's so electric and he can, he can go get it. He's got uh, you know unbelievable ability after the catch as well. He moves just like, it's kind of got that lean body type and the way he moves remind me of Garrett Wilson um, of just like that kind of just wiry, explosive, you know, fluid athlete. Um, when I watched him at corner, I mean, it was just inconsistent. The Stanford game was not good. Um, that, that was a rough one. But then I go back and look at it and I think I wrote about it. He played like 140 snaps or whatever it was. And that, like an insane amount of snaps. Um so it's you got to give him a little bit of a pass on that, just because as a corner having having tired legs is going to show up a lot more than it would at wide out. Um, but I liked him better. I thought this guy's a first round wide receiver who's got like elite elite upside at that position. After doing the draft prep draft and then watching it preseason, which rookie are you just like? I'm right, and I'm so excited about it. Whew. Um, well, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's. I, I I do the Charger game, so I mean I'm like not not like it was the hardest evaluation. Alt's pretty good. He's gonna be fine. Uh, turns out <laughs> uh, he's gonna be just fine. The whole left tackle to right tackle thing, not a big deal. Um, so felt fine about that. Uh, quarterback wise, no. I mean I think everybody. It's I don't know that I came away you know disappointed in any of the quarterbacks. I think all of them played well. Um, you know, I don't think you can really learn anything. I've always said preseason's a liar, so I don't. I try not to take too much uh, out of that. I would say, gosh, you know, Bo Nix maybe uh, a little bit uh, better than I thought. Just the more I see of him, the more I'm like, okay, the arm is better. You know, some guys it's just it's hard to tell that Oregon offense too. Like they're like, okay, no, the arm is even is a little bit better than I gave him credit for. Um, so that would be one maybe on the other side of things. I'm trying to think of. Is there any, I mean, it doesn't else. have to be a quarterback or anything like yeah. that. Um, well, I mean, it's just so hard for the line of scrimmage play. Like the edge rushers, nobody plays. Very, very few teams play their, their front line offensive line. And there's zero depth in this league. So like I, I'm stoked for Booker because I liked him a lot. The edge rusher from Kansas that went to the Bears who was borderline unblockable. I think my. My comp was he was a Kirkland brand, Max Crosby, um, you know, and he's and Kirkland's he's been, a solid brand. I mean, that's stuff. It is a forever. solid brand. Yeah. It's a good golf ball. It, you know, it's fine. Um, paper towels. Fantastic. But he uh, he was awesome in the preseason. And I'm excited about that because I liked him as a player. But then I'm also reluctant to, to go all in there because I'm like, I don't who who's he rushing against here because none of these front line linemen play and there's no offensive line depth in this league. I hear the irons test like incredibly well. Like it's hard to keep get your hands on really? the Kirkland irons. Yeah, I've watched videos <laughs> on all that stuff, and there's a pretty good chance I probably could have saved a lot of money just being like. But it's just 
Yeah. That's a tough one, though. It's a yeah. tough one you pull out of the bag. The one time I got invited to Bel Air, I just don't know how it would have gone over. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, like, which ones are yours? Mine are the Kirklands, the <laughs> stiff ones. Stiff ones. <laughs> you know, I tell you, it tells you a lot about your comfort level with the, your friends when you're playing golf is when you when you're looking for your ball and you find a Kirkland, and you're like, <laughs> do I pocket this thing or do I throw it back? <laughs> uh, I feel like, all right, let me just, let's just end here. Cause I went a little bit longer. I don't talk a ton of fantasy, but I loved your excitement about landing Brock Bowers. Cause I think I did. I went all in. I think oddly he's, he's almost becoming overlooked because the Bowers, especially with the tight end personnel, and like we can get into the, the Minshew O'Connell part of this. I would be surprised if Bowers doesn't have a few moments his rookie season that that remind us of why he looked like maybe the best football player in all of college a couple of years ago. So here's here's my visual for you on Bowers. I went out there and saw him at training camp and obviously saw him throughout the whole draft process and, and loved him. This is where I would explain it. If you went to a Raiders practice, right? And they put Brock Bowers in, uh, you know, 88. And he lined up at receiver and ran and went through all individual drills with the wideouts. He looks the part. If you put him in 28 and put him in the backfield and let him go through individual drills with the running backs, you wouldn't, you say, hey, one of those guys is a tight end. You're like, I don't know. I don't know if I can tell you which one. Like he, he's that type of an athlete. Like he just kind of can. I'd probably pick the white one room. just to guess, but go well, ahead. Well, I mean, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> Although if I had Chiefs, to, if you were telling me the to Chiefs, guess, right? the Chiefs, the Chiefs have uh, steel now. So they're, uh, that's a white, white running back is, uh, is making a dent there and with Andy Reid there in Kansas city. Right. The Raiders have the, the New Hampshire kid too, right? Oh, lobby. Yeah. yeah lobby. Yeah. So maybe so, I, maybe I wouldn't get it right. You wouldn't know. It's 50 yeah. 50, man. You got <laughs> He's got a shot of sneaking through there. Uh, but I think you could, I think I, the bold statement I'll make, and I know Devonte Adams, obviously everything he's accomplished. I think Brock Bowers will be their best offensive player this year. Whoa. That is, that's spicy to end this. So, um, of course he's hurt. So yeah, you know, who knows? He'll probably get nine balls this year. <laughs> <laughs> I love your work, man. And always appreciate the visits again. Check them out app move the sticks and of course the podcast and all of his work up on nfl.com thanks man i think you go kirkland clubs but just not the covers you just gotta get some <laughs> you throw some throw some tailor-made covers on those things <laughs> i think the next family outing for the jeremiah is you're going to be at costco and you're going to be going you're going to start getting your hand you're going to go oh, i like the weight i like i like how this feels <laughs> I can see it happening. Might get a deal out of this for you. Uh, maybe some new grips. All yeah, right. There you go. Thanks, man. See you, buddy. <laughs>